Hello, and thank you for joining us for today's Expert Corner. Today, we're gonna to be talking to product owner, Diana Jaffe, about flow and automation and how flow is the future. As always, please keep in mind our forward-looking statement and make all purchasing decisions based on currently available technology. Let's go talk to Diana. Hi, Diana, thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, Leanne, how are you? Really good, really good. Um, we're so excited to talk to you today. Uh, I know you have been hard at work and lots of cool stuff for admins in the world of automation. So we're super excited to get into that a little bit today. Um, but first, you know, I know many of our audience members may have uh, seen you previously on Release Readiness Live and, and, and seen your name um, with, you know, flow updates. But there might be awesome admins out there who haven't met you yet. So do you care to introduce yourself to our audience? I'm Diana Jaffe. I am one of our product managers at Salesforce on our platform automation team. So we cover all of the low code or no code automation tools that you use to automate your business on the Salesforce platform. And specifically what I focus on is our triggered automation. So that's a lot of what you'll see in workflow rules and process builder. Anytime a record changes and you want to make an update, that entire arena is really my specialty. And that's an arena that our admins love, right? Yeah. Like our admins are spending a lot of time uh, thinking about automating their business, uh, creating automations for their end users and admins out there who maybe haven't done that yet, this is a great chance for you to learn more about the automation that's available and where you might have some opportunities to add automation. Um, now, I know, you know you're working today on uh, running this product and, and delivering awesome automation features for our admins, but can you tell us a little bit about kind of your journey to becoming a product owner at Salesforce? Yeah. So, um, it's been a road. It's been a long journey. I have been a product manager for over 10 years at this point um, through a wide variety of products. Um, and it started out, um, Leanne and I were chatting about this. I showed up at my first internship um, to write code and found out that product was a job because I had no idea. And then I started um, asking various people, how do you do that? And what are the skills? And, and where do you get started? Um, and in particular, I think a theme to my career and the things I love are helping other people to do their best work. I've really always gravitated towards uh, enterprise software, towards admin and config tools. I love it. I love the puzzle of it. And I love helping people um, to get their work done. And then I also love that my job allows me to do that directly with people as well. So working with the engineers, unblocking people, working with design and CX, um, our sort of content writers and everybody to, to pull the product together. So I get to do that both in what I design and build and also in how I get to work with people every day, so. I love that. I love, um, you know, that you're finding both with the product you're delivering and also the teams that you're working with internally um, you know, that it's a really important skill set and, and kind of feature of the job that you get yeah. to enable people around you. Yeah, definitely. That's what I love most. Um, and I love that uh, the Salesforce platform has so many tools. It's really exciting. I've worked at other companies and the um, admin community that this product has is so awesome. <laughs> it's so much fun because a lot of times when you're doing, you know, work-based tools, um, People can grow and people can mumble because they want to go home at the end of the day and scroll through uh, social media or something that's a little more fun. Um, but uh, the community here and the engagement and the important work that we all do really makes it really worthwhile. So I love we it. We still scroll social media, but it's usually awesome admin Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is a Twitter. It's great. <laughs> We're usually Better. scrolling our awesome community on Twitter and seeing what they're talking about. In Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it's on Reddit. I read the Reddit threads, the Twitter threads. Mm -hmm. uh, as a, a product manager trying to get feedback and build the right things, that kind of um, input is so invaluable. I was screenshotting Reddit and putting it into a slide yesterday to try to justify to my boss why we should do a feature. So we really do love our admins and we listen. Yeah. And if you're, if you're watching this and if, you know, maybe you're newer to our community, um, you can always join our conversation on Twitter with hashtag awesome admin, because we really do listen, right? Yeah. Like our product owners, like they and are listening. Um, I love hearing that you're screenshotting Reddit and, and, and sharing. Twitter. 
Yeah, in I have a list of in our um, our trailhead community also as well. That's that's a huge source because we can search all of that. Um, but yeah, um, when I go to design a feature, we we get a list of all the links on trailhead on Twitter um, with feedback from people to try to make sure we're keeping that in mind as we build. Yeah, and and I love you know that point about enablement because our admin community like that's what they're doing for their users too, right? Like I think that's really a through line between what product does and what our admins are doing for their end users because admins are really product owners of Salesforce, right? And so that's such a similarity there. They're, you know, striving to create efficient work patterns mm-hmm. for their colleagues and their end users and their Listening customers. Listening to their users, gathering that feedback and like finding that right solution, which often yeah. I think is more of an art um, people think it's just, you know, a list of requirements on a spreadsheet that you could check off. And there's often much more of an art to finding what's optimal, understanding the platform and the tools available, understanding what's going to be easy or sort of go with the flow versus um, be swimming uphill and and bringing everybody together. That's absolutely what product does and what our admins are doing every day. Well, and a little more on that, like you mentioned, one of the things that admins have to do is pick the right solution. Like that's uh, be informed and be knowledgeable about the breadth of solutions out there and also knowledgeable about their business and find that kind of match between the two. What's the right solution of this breadth of solutions I'm aware of? And then what's, how does that tie to solve the business problem based on my knowledge of the business? And that's, you know, really where a lot of our admins sit. And that's like really important to the admin job duties and and the value that they add for our customers. And I know that in the arena of automation, you know, there's been a lot of updates. There's been a lot of changes, um, really exciting changes, but it's a lot of information. Um, And sometimes I think it can be a lot of information for um, our community to kind of digest and take in and then know what path to go down with automation tools um, with kind of a lot of the changes and in, in, in growth in the last couple of years. If you could give admins that are listening um, some advice and some guidance and clarity on, you know, what should they really be thinking about for their next thing with automation and what should they be keeping really front of mind as they're doing their product roadmap plannings? Um, with regards to automation, I think that would be so helpful, just really distilling down with a lot of clarity for admins, what is top of mind, what should be front of mind for them with automation for their next uh, roadmap planning? Definitely. So I think Salesforce has a ton of opportunities that I think um, there'll be other people talking about in terms of Einstein Automate and some of the the big exciting initiatives. Um, but in in my area of the world with record triggered automation in particular, there's also some really exciting stuff happening, and I think it really gets into the nuts and bolts. So my one message on that is that flow is the future. Anytime, any question that I get asked about this, I always start with flow is the future. And uh, if you're familiar with our tools, you might be a little frustrated um, if you've been working with workflow rules and been told to go to process builder and told to go to flow. I know it can be kind of a headache, but there are some really great reasons why we're moving to flow. And so um, I'm really excited to share those and kind of talk through what we're doing there. And and to be clear, we're a little bit in the middle. I think this is something a lot of admins can relate to as you're embarking on a big project and rolling things out. There's also that in-between time where you know where you're going, but you still have a lot of work to do to get all the way there. So that's where we are trying to be really transparent with our admins about what's there today or what's not there. Um, And also try to incorporate all the feedback we're getting. So we've laid out where we think we, what we think we need to do to get there most quickly or to get people what they need the most, but that has definitely already shifted or changed priorities based on what we hear uh, from the community as well. So um, that's where I think it's, this is a great opportunity to kind of stay up to date and learn um, what we're where we're going um, and then figure out as you're building out automation or as you're evaluating the automation you already have, um, what's the appropriate time, especially if you're new to flow and you're comfortable using workflow rules or a process builder. If you 
really pay attention to all our releases and you're really up to date, you'll know this, but I know most people don't have time as much to watch our smiling faces and every release readiness live and watch, read all of our beautiful release notes. So I kind of provided a recap of what we've been investing in over the last few years. So starting out in Flow, we really invested in our triggered automation. I think Flow was initially primarily a screen-based um, tool. That was its kind of big thing that it had that was nowhere else. And through the last year or two, we really focused on different ways to trigger that flow functionality that didn't have to do with screens. So it wasn't just when you pushed a button. So it would happen automatically on a schedule. So you could schedule something daily or weekly or do a one-time big batch run. And then we added our before save and after save triggers um, to run automatically anytime a record gets updated. Um, and then we also add an ability to trigger on platform events if that's what you're using. So really trying all of the ways to start your automation. Now, as soon as we added before save and after save, our savvy uh, um, automation experts went, okay, but that's already what Process Builder kind of does today. That's already what Workflow Rules does. What's going on? Um, so we are looking to ultimately move people over to use Flow. Uh, and this is for a couple reasons. So one reason why we're using Flow is we've really built it out to be more performant and more scalable from the start. There are some existing limitations um, in the age of the products that mean that we can't get the kind of performance needs. And the feedback we've gotten from a lot of our customers is they get hung up, especially in Process Builder, as they're trying to put in a lot of automation. So as the world has gotten more complex, we have to scale up our tools to meet that. We also just hear a lot of frustration with all these different tools out there. We are investing in flow in some ways for screens, and then why can't we get these things here? Why is it a little different in workflow and process builder? I've only learned one tool, um, or our documentation is all over the place. So we're really trying to consolidate and ultimately make it easier for you so that if you learn how to build a simple field update rule in flow, then building a slightly more complex auto launch flow next, triggering on a platform event next, and ultimately building up to a screen flow, we're really investing in kind of an admin learning experience as well. And lastly, there's just a lot of cool stuff flow can do. And it's more efficient on our side to invest once and give that to everybody. So we have debugging, we have super cool visual layouts, there's a lot of extensibility if you're working with your developers and trying to find ways to really optimize their time and your time so that you're working together. Um, and so really, we have a ton of great stuff happening there, and we want to be able to give it to everybody. So that's where we're trying to get to with Flow, and that's why we really think Flow is, is worth investing in. Awesome. Well, this is exciting news for admins, right? Exciting information for them to have, I think. You know, it is so important. Um, many times as admins are they're doing their own roadmap planning, right? And and doing right. their prioritization. And so I'm hearing you loud and clear. Flow is the future. Um, so if I'm an admin out there uh that's just getting started with automation, I could should really put all of my learning energy and kind of development yeah. planning and energy into flow. Um, and if I have, you know, processes and, and workflows, I think it sounds like it's a really great time to start evaluating, you know, as you're doing updates, like if you've got maybe a big update to a business yeah. process, um, maybe evaluating, is it more efficient to update that existing process builder process uh, to that mm -hmm. new business need? Or would it be more efficient to spend a little extra time now to transfer that over versus putting kind of more time and energy into that process? Um, so it's a good time to kind of in, in consider this as you're doing your uh, roadmap planning for your orgs. Yeah, absolutely. We see a lot. Um, I think when teams get to a certain level of complexity or just years of automation have built up that you start to run into performance issues or you run into things kind of stomping on each other. So an admin who was there five years ago created some workflow rules, someone new came along and created some other ones and it's a little hard to trace those all through. So mm -hmm. that's a really good opportunity to say, pick a particular um, object in the system and look at just kind of doing a, 
a, di a deep dive on everything that is being automated against that object today. And mm -hmm. whether there's um, places that you wanna make that more efficient just in general, that's a great opportunity to move it over to flow. Um, we do recognize there's the kind of, if it's not broke, don't fix it. So we are not at the point now where we're saying, if you haven't touched your automation rules in five years, go in and move them. I do think we'll get there eventually, but we want to give admins a lot more tools um, to do that automatically before we go in and ask you to do that. So we would have automated migration tools before we'd say, go rewrite things. So don't freak out if you're watching don't freak this. Out. have a bunch of processes built out. However, you know, for kind of future, both learning energy and development energy, you know, spend, if you've got hours that you're going to spend now on building an automation or updating automation, it's worth evaluating. It's if worth evaluating. It should be in flow versus um, exactly. one of the other tools. Process builder or workflow. Yeah, absolutely. So I think that's a great opportunity. Um, and we have a couple resources available. So because we're we're kind of running as fast as we can to get all the features that are in those two tools into flow, um, we update our architects guide regularly. Um, and we'll share a link to that. Um, so there's a table in there that says, here's all the features, here's which ones are coming. If there's some that aren't coming, um, we wanna be really transparent about that as well. Um, so I would say anytime you're kind of evaluating this, the architect's guide is a great place to get started because we're able to update that, um, a little more quickly than some of the trailheads and things that take longer for our team to, um, fully update. So that's a great place to get those kind of tips and tricks or, or what's, mm -hmm. what's remaining. Um, and then if you are just really enthusiastic about flow and wanting to jump in and start using it. I think two areas where we've seen really great traction. Um, one is our before save record triggered flows for field updates. So this is going to be faster than either process builder or workflows by a pretty, pretty significant margin. Um, and it should be very simple to go ahead. You set up a trigger and then you set up um, a field update or something like that. And it's really optimized. We really fine tune that. Um, on the back end to uh, update those um, those fields. So you can also use our decision element and kind of draw out all the different permutations and how you update your fields. Um, but that's an area where we've seen tremendous um, success so far. Uh, the other one um, that I think is a little bit more of a pain point today is our scheduled actions and process builder. Um, we have some longstanding issues there that we've tried to address um, when we created scheduled pads in Flow, which is pretty much um, a commensurate feature. So that's one where if you have deactivated rules that have gotten stuck or you have trouble with monitoring those rules as they're out there, we've added in more tools to let you uh, control those things and also try to sort of trigger it more efficiently, check the criteria more efficiently. So that's those are sort of the two areas that we see people um, really jump on right away. Awesome. And that's a great, you know, those are great tips for people who are evaluating, you know, existing builds that they have. What are some of those areas of opportunity to bring automation over? And then I know you're really excited about debug. Do you want to share a yeah. little bit about debug and when it's coming? Yeah. So uh, we've done a ton of investments in flow itself across different uh, flow types around debugging. So I think debugging is a really crucial part of building out your automation, especially something like triggered automation, where you're going to write it once and it's going to run a million times potentially. You know, it's going to be running multiple times every day. So the important thing there is to think about and make sure you've thought through those use cases so that when you go, that when you test and when you run it and when you set it up, you have a lot of confidence that it's um it's going to go out the door. So we've done a lot of great things um, with debug in general in that the product. Uh, my colleague Tim has been the one most responsible for that. Um, but we have visual path debugging now. So if you have a bunch of elements that are split um, and you want to know how a record um, is going to behave, you can um, see it on your flow directly on the canvas. And he, we also in 
Spring 21 um, released an ability to directly click from your debug emails back into Flow. So if you get an error, it'll you can click and you'll see our path highlighting here where it'll tell you exactly what happened with the flow, where the error happened, and really help you kind of track those things down. So we all love to think that you could build the flow once and it'll work perfectly forever, but the reality that we all know and love is that there are problems or things happen or unexpected use cases. So we also really try to invest in um, adding to those tools. And one limitation that we've had for record triggered flows in particular, um, so these before save and after save flows is we haven't been able to leverage those debug tools and flow yet. And so I'm so excited to share that come summer 21, we will support debugging your record triggered flows. And you talk about Twitter. I have had several people on Twitter share with me how important this is to them. And I, I will say even internally, when we're demoing or talking about flows, we feel that admin pain too. So this has been on my list for so long and I'm so excited that we're going to uh, be shipping it to your doorstep soon. I'm so excited about this as well. Um, I think anyone who builds flows is gonna be really excited about this. So it's awesome. Yeah. Um, so can you share with us you know, more about what's on your mind, what's coming up next, things that admins maybe you should be excited about that are coming in the future besides debug? Absolutely. So um, I previously shared kind of how we build out the trigger side. So all the different ways that you might want to start a flow. And then there's all the stuff you want to do once your automation is happening. What do you want to change in the system? What do you want to trigger? So I think now we're focused on that second piece a little more. We're setting up the triggers. Now we're um, focusing on the content. So you'll see that in our last few releases. Um, we added entry uh, conditions. We added an ability to access the record prior to an update so you can compare values before and after. Um, and what's coming up as well as debug in summer 21 is uh, we are doing, we are kind of rounding out our is changed functionality. So these will be formulas that are really familiar to you if you use workflow rules or process builder is changed is new. That's all gonna be available in flow. And then we're also focusing on the uh, user experience. So that's another big uh, pain point that we've heard from users is that flow is scarier to use. It's a little more overwhelming. There's a lot more rough edges, I would say. It has a tremendous amount of power, but with that power can come accidentally doing the wrong thing. And that's on us, I feel. That's on us to build the product to be clearer and simpler and help our admins do the right thing. So that's one of the things I'm really focused on right now is how can we take some of these scenarios now that we've closed some of the feature gaps and make them easier to use than workflow or process builder so you don't have, so admins don't have this learning gap. So that's where we love to hear from the admin community because I certainly have my own opinions on what I think is hard um, about learning flow. And as we get you know, new engineers come in, they run into a lot of the same problems that our, our admins do, um, but we also love to hear from the community because there's nothing outweighs um, direct user feedback and votes on that kind of um, feedback. So the first thing we're doing um, is in summer 21, we are releasing an easier way to update those fields. So today you have to kind of mess with variables and some other things we wanna to clear that out and only have you use variables if you're using a really complex um, set up and so you'll see that but then we want to hear your feedback did you like that did that help what should we do next um, because i think we have a lot more that we could deliver to make those experiences really smooth you heard it here admins super important to provide your feedback yeah participate in prioritization comment and vote on ideas participate in the trailblazer community group get on twitter um, we, listen. we really are listening. We really, really care about your feedback. Um, all these products are built for you. So um, hopefully you hear that reinforced from, you know, product owners like Diana. Uh, yeah. and that's so important that we get your feedback and we love it. And the other thing that we do is we do even sometimes reach out to those communities to look at, at upcoming designs and mm -hmm. just solicit that direct feedback. That's something I'm working on 
right now with um, one of our designers um, because we have kind of some more complex situations on, on how we manage a lot of triggers, how we manage a lot of data. Um, and so that's something we'll probably, you'll probably see a post from me on the Trailblazer community at some point in the next month or two. So that's the kind of example um, where, yeah, we, we like to be pretty transparent, um, safe harbor accepted and, uh, and get your feedback. Well, Dana, this has been so helpful for our admin community, for me. Um, I think it's so important to think about and for our admins to kind of have access to information that's not only what was delivered in recent releases, but also what's that roadmap planning uh, look like for them and what are the things that they should be prioritizing both for their own learning journeys and as they're you know, making those very important product decisions uh, at their company. So I feel like this is so helpful and so important for our admins to, to hear um, as we're kind of on this precipice of like a lot of these big changes coming um, for the world of automation. So I want to thank you so much for joining us today. This has been wonderful. Um, and we will definitely hopefully see you back again and definitely see you in the Trailblazer community. Absolutely. I'll see you there. Bye, Diana. Thank you. Bye. Awesome. That was such an informative chat with Diana. It's so important for us as admins to always stay really up to speed on where the latest product investments are and what is the future of different products that we're investing our time in and both with building solutions and with our learning. So I think that's really important for us to keep in mind. And of course, we've learned that flow is the future and to spend a lot of our learning energy there and really make ourselves flow experts so we can build awesome automation solutions for our customers. You can always find videos like this at our blog at admin.salesforce.com and also by subscribing to our YouTube channel at Salesforce Admins so you never miss another expert corner. Thank you so much for joining us today and I will see you next time.